Great morning, great afternoon, and great evening, uh, friends on Facebook. Uh, I want to welcome you to the uh, world premiere of the Mind Body Factor map. Now, uh, this uh, map is uh, a tool that I've uh, just created, but it ties together um, my 18 years as a bodywork practitioner. I practiced uh, shiatsu uh, at my family practice, shiatsu therapist of Hawaii. And it also incorporates uh, the last nine years of uh, my studies and personal work and professional work in mindset development, starting with the uh, PSI seminars back way back in 2009. Gosh, actually, it's 10 years. It'll be 10 years this year. Um, and also my studies with Dr. John Martini at the Martini Institute. Um, so this is a really exciting moment. Uh, there was a lot of work getting here, but uh, here we are. And... We're going live. <laughs> so anyway, um, the Mind Body Factor Map is a simple tool to help uh, people um, use the Mind Body Connection. Now, some of you may have heard about the Mind Body Connection. Some of you may be fans of it, but let's kind of go over some simple principles of what the Mind Body Connection really is. Now, we have a body, and we have a brain and a nervous system. You know, some people keep them separate. I believe that they're actually all connected. And so the mind-body connection is connecting the, you know, the brain, the nervous system, the body. And there's, uh, if you study energy and energy work, there's even the energy component, because underneath it all is all vibration and energy. And you know, our uh, organs and systems and tissues are just a physical manifestation of that. So the mind-body connection is this, um, you know, the our body is a vehicle. It's the, the meat sack. That it's the wetware. And our mind and our energy, our consciousness, who we are as a person, you know, if we pick up our body as a computer, uh, the mind itself is like software that drives it, the energy that drives it. And uh, when we experience life, you know, we have um, sensory uh, systems and motor systems in our body. And we're taking, constantly taking in information through our senses. This is the information, this is the input. It goes in through our eyes, our ears, our nose, our taste, um, our skin. And then there's a whole bunch of other senses that, uh, you know, kinesthetics, uh, vibration. There's all these other things. When people really um, are really good at their craft, whatever it is, um, they have this almost like extrasensory perception. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff that we feel uh, besides, you know, what we can see. And so we're taking in all this information. Information, we're processing it, and then it comes out as a motor action. And so, mind-body connection uh, is about this interplay, this intersection between, you know, what's happening on the outside, how we're processing it, and what's happening on the inside. And it provides another lens, another way of understanding and looking at what disease is, and uh, how we handle our, you know, our stresses. And if you look at the word disease, it means dis-ease, what we're not at ease with. And so uh, we need to actually look at uh, one of the things that drives a lot of disease, one of the big causes is stress. Now stress, um, and this is from uh, stress.org, defines stress as any kind of physical, mental, or emotional strain or tension. It's a condition of feeling ex experienced when a person perceives, very important, perceives, that demands exceed the personal and social resources that the individual is able to mobilize. Because we have senses, sensing the world, it's actually based on perception. Perception is a big thing. And how we perceive the world um, is determined. One model that I love using is Dr. Martini's uh, value system model, is that we all have a value system, and we all have a unique higher values and everybody's highest values are unique and so how we're perceiving the world is uh, perceived through our value system our value system is the lens it's like the you know it helps uh helps me uh, determine what i see as positive what i see as negative and so perception is a big determinant of what we perceive and how we experience the world what's stressful what's not and there's different types of stress we have uh, eustress in the middle, distress, and calm. 
And in distress, when we perceive our values are being challenged, when we see things as a negative, we can have acute stress, which it triggers our fight, flight, freeze response, or as a sympathetic response, an autonomic response. We also have chronic stress, where it's not that intense, but it's constant. So it's like work. If you know, if you're not, you know, there's things that you don't like about your job. Challenge your values, people, the tasks, uh, family members. Um, that is chronic stress. And if we're over challenged, eventually, you know, we're going to have different stress symptoms and diseases. And so the mind body act covers some of these uh, top seven most common ones. And if we get over challenged, we experience burnout. Uh, so we have a real, you know, major disease. So, you know, it can be an acute back pain or you get sick or you come down with some kind of more serious disease like uh, pneumonia or cancer or something like that. So that's what we're experiencing too much stress. And at the same time, we also can have the perception of uh, not enough stress, where we're under-challenged, we're over-supported. And the symptom we experience there is boredom. You know, it feels like, you know, you're just feeling lethargic, feeling lazy, you know, you just, you know, you're bored, and, you know, as the saying goes, idle hands do the devil's work, you start doing interesting things. <clears throat> and so what we're striving for our disease symptoms are actually trying to, it's a feedback mechanism. We do need the challenge. So not too much. We do need um, some challenge. Not we don't we don't need uh, we need support, but not too much support. We're trying to stay in the middle. And you know it, it's not a constant thing. It's you know we're, we're swimming through life or we're dancing through life in the middle. And so our challenges, our supports and challenges, maximum growth according to Dr. Martini, maximum growth is on the border of support, support and challenge on the border of pleasure and pain. And so our diseases are trying to actually, our disease symptoms are trying to help us stay in the middle. Now, the mind-body factor is um, uh, my approach to the mind-body connection. And uh, again, it's uh, combining my 18 years of experience in uh, shiatsu body work, and I've also studied a few other techniques, and also the nine years of, of mindset development. But I break it down very simply. Um, in terms of body, mindset, and wisdom. And so our body, which consists of our brain, our nervous system, all the systems, um, even the energy, uh, it's the awareness of what we're feeling. It's the awareness of what we're feeling. So our body is constantly speaking to us through symptoms, through health and disease symptoms, through pleasure and pain. And most people just stop at the feeling and never really take the time to dig into it. And if you actually sit and be present and breathe into whatever you're feeling, pleasure, pain, and you really just pay attention to what's inside, you'd be surprised what what awareness you get. And that's using your mind and using your awareness. And um, mindset is how conscious are we of our perceptions? How conscious are we of what's occurring on the outside, but also what's occurring on the inside? And when we can put the two together, you know, take the um, the felt sense of the body, the what's occurring in our mind, consciously and unconsciously, and we put that together. That's where we get wisdom, where we can take action by applying the knowledge gained from the messages within, and also from the messages on the outside as well. So you know, I call it the BMW. You know, our body is the vehicle, so it's your BMW. That's why I like BMWs and I drive one. Um, it's funny how that works. But anyway, here's the mind-body factor map. And I put this together um, based on my experience in my body work and my coaching work. And these are the top seven most common mind-body symptoms and the related causes. The ones that is the most common is lower back pain. Now, this map is a simple version because uh, uh, you know, it's hard to see. So actually, let's switch to the more detailed version, and then we can zoom in on some of the different parts. Actually, let me take this out of presentation mode. Now, the most common one we see in my clinic is lower back pain. So you may or may not be able to see this on the live stream, but uh, you'll be able to download this in a little bit. So you'll get a full high fidelity copy. But anyway, lower back pain is about your highest values being challenged. 
Here's some of the common statements. I'm bending over backwards. I can't bend over or it hurts to bend over. I can't or it hurts to stand up. So if you're experiencing any kind of lower back pain, you know, a quality question is to ask, okay, where are my values being challenged? Where is something that's so important to me being challenged? And um, I went, I just went through a lower back pain episode back in uh, January. And um, it hit me all of a sudden. Uh, and I was, you know, I knew I didn't do anything physical, physically shame, But I was mentally, emotionally stressed. And I had been ignoring it. Uh, last year, I traveled... Uh, between April and January, I traveled 12 times. And uh, while it was really exciting, there was a lot of pleasure, uh, the strain and the stresses of traveling, taking time away from my business, um, you know, just going through security, all, and all the fun, value challenging things, and including the cost too. So um, I was, you know, I had burned, burned myself up. I'd over challenged myself and I was ignoring the symptoms. So my body said, okay, let's kick John's ass by giving him some back pain, and it was right over here on the uh, right side. And when it happened, um, I didn't quite get the message until, you know, I had to process it. I had help from my partner, Michelle, and a, a few other people. But uh, I realized uh, outside my clinic that if I was walking fast, I could feel more pain versus if I took smaller steps. And so I was able to interpret that. I'm like, hmm, okay, where, where am I uh, walking too quickly? Where am I trying to move too quickly? And then it didn't hit me immediately, but it occurred to me a couple days later where I realized, oh my gosh, I'm scheduled to go on, a, on another trip in February. I was going to go study with uh, my dear colleague, uh, Lisa John, who um, her work has been really helpful in uh, understanding the mind-body connection as well. Um, I realized that uh, I needed to cancel that trip because um, I was taking too much time away from my uh, clinic. I was uh, physically tired, emotionally tired, financially, you know, just overstretched. My body was telling me to stop. And when I made the decision, uh, my back pain immediately felt better. It didn't get fully resolved, but I, I, as soon as I decided, I made the decision. And that's the beauty of the mind-body connection. If you get the message, you're Symptom is like a email message or a text message. Uh, remember AOL, you've got mail, you've got mail. That symptom is your body saying, hey, pay attention, hey, pay attention. And if you take the time to pay attention, really listen to it, read into it, feel into it, you'd be surprised at what your body's trying to say to you. So that was my experience with the mind-body factor, the mind-body connection uh, back in January. And uh, when I made the decision, I felt better, and I needed to take time. And actually, it took some time to recover. I, I needed to rest through February and March. But it gave me time to just uh, work on my business, work on me. I, um, and then actually, this math kind of came out of that. So out of every challenge, there is a gift. You know, as Lisa Nichols says, uh, life's challenges are gifts wrapped in sandpaper. So... This is the gift that came out of that sandpaper uh, that occurred earlier this year. Now, here's some other um, uh, symptoms. The neck. And uh, the common theme is pain in the neck. Stress returning to the feminine, which is left. Stress returning to the masculine, right. So the left side of the body is the feminine side. The right side of the body is masculine. So simple question is, who's being a pain in the neck? Or what is a pain in the neck? And you'd be surprised. Some people, you know, just go, oh, my gosh, yeah, you know, that thing I have to do, oh, or, you know, that guy is really pissing me off. Once you make the connection, the pain tends to uh, calm down, and then you can take some action. Sometimes you might just need to have a conversation. Uh, you may need to go get some help. Or you may just need to let, let go of whatever it is that's, you know, pain in the neck. And if you're having stiffness, you know, it's about, you know, stiffness, uh, making decisions. So which way do I turn? Which way do I turn? You know, sometimes you have uh, stress of a decision. You're either overwhelmed with one or many. So where or who are you having stress of decisions? Now, if we look at uh, headaches, headaches are very common. Um, and 
it usually is driven by emotion. It's feeling angry, frustrated, upset about doing things you don't want to do. So, you know, question is, what are you doing that you don't want to do? You know, what's not bringing you joy? What are you doing too much of, too little of? Um, and it can be about yourself. It can be about other things. The shoulders, pain in the shoulders. We've got uh, the common theme of, with shoulders is about relationships. And I made this discovery uh, when I was uh, experimenting back in 2013 with my mom's left shoulder pain. And she's, it's been chronic. And so, you know, I, I um, asked to massage it every now and then. And um, so I said, hey, let's uh, let's do the Demartini method on it. And uh, so I uh, put through the method and I had her feel into the pain and recall memories and moments that were associated. And uh, what came up very often was a lot of um, memories of when my um, mom was young and uh, she was in her teenage years and she was being um, having uh, relationship challenges with her mom, my grandmother. And so and the, the thing they were fighting about was actually my dad. And so she was fighting with my dad, uh, fighting with my grandma about my dad. And so we did the method. We were collapsing, neutralizing the memories, and she could it felt she could feel the change in her shoulder, which is super cool. So that was a really cool personal experience uh, working with my mom. And um, her shoulder felt better. And a, a day later, uh, she said, "Hey, that really helped." And uh, my she was caregiving for my grandmother, who was in her 90s at the time, and uh, she said, "You know, I, I'm a little. I feel like I'm a little nicer to your, your grandma." Because we got to clear out some baggage from many years ago. But anyway, um, got pain in the shoulders, feeling angry, frustrated, resentful, or upset about relationships. Um, if there's sickness, it can be, you know, you're experiencing resistance or you're resisting, your values are being challenged with a, a work relationship or family relationship. Uh, frozen shoulders, uh, if it's uh, pain with movement or frozen, you're unable or unwilling to raise your hand or get attention. So you know, who are you having stress with in your relationships? Um, most recently, I was at a workshop, and one of the um, attendees, uh, her shoulder was stiff and kind of sore, and she couldn't really raise her hand. And so I was listening to her language, because remember, this is based on perception. So I was listening to some of the keywords, and so I asked her, okay, um, you know, I said, you know, would you like to you know, un unpack that? And she said, yes. And I listened to the words, and I just asked her, okay, where is that happening? And, and where and because it was on her left side, where's that happening in the feminine area of life or with any females? And her mind just went, and then she started to, to cry because she her, she made the mind body connection. She connected it. And she started to share about you know what was happening. Uh, she was caregiving for her mom and there was a, a whole lot of stress around that. And uh, she got to release some emotions, make the connection, and I said, okay, now Raise your arm. How does it feel? She goes, you know, it's actually feeling a little better because she made that connection. So another way to look at pain is, you know, pain is just unconscious information. It's just, you know, what you're unconscious of. So that was really cool. Um, sciatica, piriformis uh, syndrome, pain in the butt. Who or what is a pain in the butt? So, you know, if you ever have uh, pain from walking or sitting, you know, and if it's on the left side, look at your female relationships or the feminine. Or if it's on the right side, look at your male relationships or the masculine. Now, let's see, I'm gonna turn that. The knees. Uh, knees are about authority issues. The pain bending the knee. Anybody watch Game of Thrones? I just saw the new season. Bend the knee, as uh, Daenerys Targaryen says. Uh, so it's stress with bending to authority. And so if you don't bend the knee to uh, uh, Daenerys, uh, you're going to have the disease of uh, getting roasted by a dragon. But for most of us, we're not, we don't live in Westeros. Uh, we usually have pain with uh, you know, our boss or somebody we perceive as above us. And so uh, you can have pain in bending the knee or pain is you know, getting up from a chair and standing up. You go, ah. And often um, you know, we feel it here, but it's actually in the back. Later on this week and in future live streams, I'm going to go into detail on the anatomy, the physiology, the nervous system, and some of the perceptions and some, some case studies. Um, so I'm just kind of quickly going over. Um, and so the question you can ask is, you know, 
who are you having stress with, who is an authority. And you also may want to check yourself because sometimes you know you might be the boss, you might be the parent, and you're dealing with uh, what you perceive as insubordination. And so that can be a, a possible issue as well. <clears throat> and then if we go back over here, uh, feet, <clears throat> plantar fasciitis. Um, the pain can occur anywhere on the bottom of the foot. And uh, if you have pain near the front of the foot, it's about stress or fear with taking steps forward. So, you know, uh, and if it's near the heels, uh, it's about digging your heels. So where are you uh, experiencing stress and taking a step forward? Where are you digging your heels in are two common questions. So, <clears throat> oops, there you go. That's the mind-body factor map, the top seven most common mind-body symptoms and the related causes. And so this uh, map is just a, it's a starting point. It doesn't cover everything, but these are the most common ones. And so it's a good starting point to just get you to be more aware, uh, to start to listen to that text message or that email that your body's trying to send you and you haven't opened it. Once you listen to it and make the connection, uh, your symptoms will often decrease. And it depends on how many issues. It can be one issue, it can be a bunch of issues stacked together. It can be something that's currently happening or stuff that's happening, you know, it's just reminding you of baggage that happened 20 years ago, like in the case of my mom. But um, it's a starting point. And uh, once you become aware, then you can like, take some action. And, you know, um, you can uh, go see your massage therapist, your chiropractor, or acupuncturist. You, you will tend to actually get better results if you're oh, conscious and aware of what the symptom, what the symptom is about. Because one of the struggles and one of the reasons why I created this was um, in the past, I would wonder why would pe what certain people respond better to massage and others didn't. And when I started to do research and um, look into this, when I became aware of the mind-body connection, thanks to Dr. John Martini, um, what the factor was the mind-body factor. Uh, how conscious were, was that person of their outer world and inner world and the inner play? The people who are, you know, make the connections real quick tend to get the best results. The people who were really unconscious and hadn't, hadn't done any personal development or they were choosing not to is a choice. Um, they tend to struggle. And the reason why the disease is going to continue is because, again, it's trying to get them to be authentic. Disease symptoms are actually trying to get you to be authentic. It's trying to uh, help you find the truth. You could say that when you're having a symptom, your some kind of lie is running in you, and by lie meaning that you're exaggerating or minimizing the truth. So anyway, <clears throat> uh, the mind body factor it's a free download. Uh, if you go to my website sugai solutions sugai dot solutions uh, slash mind body factor map, you can go ahead and download. You just uh, subscribe, uh, and I will be sending out. Uh, you you get a free download, and then um, I'll be sending out some content. Uh, so I'll be recording. All these uh, broadcasts and I'm gonna you know summarize them so you know if you miss it um, I'm gonna organize them and um, you'll get an email and I'll you know post them to YouTube and a few other places so uh, if you're not able to tune in live you can catch the replay so I want to thank all of you that uh, came and tuned in live today and because this is a uh, world premiere and debut um, you'll get a bonus uh, free 15 minutes of coaching if you follow these instructions and here's how you get it so what I want you to do is uh, download the map, uh, print it out, and I want you to circle the area or areas that you're currently having symptoms or you may have had symptoms in the past and would like to peel the onion. Now write up, you can write out your answers to the questions on the map, or if it's too personal, uh, you can just direct message me. And I want you to take a photo of the map and post it in the comments. So you can either post it in this comment or um, in the future uh, live streams, uh, post in the comments there. So, uh, and then when you do that, I will uh, send you a direct link to uh, uh, schedule an appointment, and we'll do some uh, quick coaching. So, you know, if you want to, if you want to, um, kind of get a deeper understanding of what that means, and you know, some action steps, you know, to figure out how to resolve it. So, sometimes maybe you know, getting the right uh, practitioner, or you know, getting some coaching, getting some help. We'll figure that out. So uh, it's my gift to you uh, with the video of the map. Now, tomorrow, um, I'm going to be talking about the lower body. So we're going to go in uh, deeper detail. So for those of you who have 
like to geek out on some anatomy or if you're just curious about it, I'll talk about some of the lower body symptoms, starting with the lower back and the feet and the knees. Um, there's a lot of, uh, in my 18 years, I, I see a lot of people who have gone through other practitioners and they didn't get results. And often it's because they didn't, you know, the other practitioners did, were not aware of the all the intricacies of uh, stress that build up in the legs that cause back pain. So um, I'm going to unpack that tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be uh, Wednesday, April 17th, 2.45 p.m. Eastern, 11.45 a.m. Pacific, and 8.45 uh, a.m. Hawaii. So if you want to tune in line, make sure you follow me, um, and uh, I'll, uh, we'll unpack the lower body on the anatomy part, and then also work on some of the psychology and some of the situations. And then on Friday, I'm going to talk about the upper body. So we'll talk, cover the shoulders, the neck, uh, headaches, and uh, that's going to occur on Friday, April 19th, 2.30 p.m. Eastern, 11.30 uh, a.m. Pacific, uh, 8.30 a.m. Hawaii. Again, follow me if you uh, want to be in live. And of course, I'm going to have the replay. If you subscribe to the uh, uh, subscribe to my um, mailing list, uh, you also get the uh, links to all the replays. So with that being said, um, remember to download uh, the Mind Body Factor map, subscribe. Follow me on Facebook, and um, I want to thank all of you. Uh, the response to my um, announcement was awesome, and there's so many people online right now, and so this is really cool. Um, I definitely was having some, um, some uh, stress today preparing for it, but it was um, definitely the new stress where um, it was exciting and there's pleasure and pain, but, uh, you know, it was uh, the fact that I had uh, – so many supportive comments and so much interest uh, was really inspiring for me. So that was that's what you stress is when you're doing something amazing, doing something inspiring, something that's in your zone of genius, and your highest values. That's you stress. And all our disease symptoms are trying to help us uh, live that way, live authentically, live in our highest values, live where we're, we're contributing from our heart. And so if you're not feeling that way, and you feel like you know, life sucks, you're being over challenged. Um, Definitely download the Mind Body Map. It will help you get started. It's the first step to be able to get more aware. Uh, post post the picture online, and uh, you know you can get some quick coaching from me, and uh, we can help unpack it and help you figure out the next steps. So please download it, and uh, thank you for everybody that tuned in today. Uh, I really appreciate it, and uh, please uh, join me on the uh, live stream tomorrow and on Friday, and I'll be doing more, um, kind of feeling it out as we go along. But uh, thank you, and aloha.